Nobody sold housing, right? We're still doing housing like we've done it for a thousand years with a hammer, with nails, with trades, on site, specialty. And so we wonder why the costs keep going up. Well, if, if raw materials keep going up, if labor keeps going up, if we're not having babies so we don't have labor, labor's gonna go skyrocketing, right? Well, if, if you have inherently lots of labor in the way you make your housing, your housing's going to inflate. So we have this huge, huge problem, but nobody is tackling it. You might think somebody's tackling it, but if you look at what they are tackling, they're just moving the labor into a big building. Right. That's all they're doing. They're still using drywall. They're still using two by fours. They're still using trades. They're still just aggregating it and getting. Yeah, they're like still it. using plumbing the same way. So if we really want to conquer housing, we have to do to housing what we did with cars. If you go back and figure out how we were doing the horse carriage versus how we did the car that everybody could afford, it's night and day. Mm. But we're not doing that in housing yet. So what we've been doing for 40 years now here in the lab is having a team work on all the issues of how do you how do you make a house like a car, literally. We even call our things cars now. RVs. <laughs> we can all live in RVs. <laughs> but an RV, if you go to Kansas and see how an RV is actually made, it's made like a house. Mm, in a really? So what is the main difference between how a, an RV is made and how a, a mainstream mass-produced car is made? Okay, so you've probably seen videos of car manufacturers making a car, right? Well, the car's going down the line, and the labor, which is only a small percentage of the total price of that car, is quickly assembling a part that's made by another assembly line. And so, for instance, Tesla can do a car every 15 minutes or something. It's coming off the line. Have you ever seen a house do that? <laughs> no. But I've also never been to an RV manufacturing facility. Yeah. But you're saying they do it like, you know, oh, they actually I've... send in a single person, yeah. put in the plumbing line, and, and then... And they're drilling and... Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're building a house in a factory. So what you have to do is rethink every step, every part of that house, and turn it into something that can be assembled like a car. And not only assembled like a car, supply chain like a car. That means taking the whole flipping thing and spending 40 years on it. So for instance, the the RV toilet that we are working on will take the waste and pyrolyze it. And what that means is you're taking the waste and converting it back to carbon. And then the carbon is so much smaller than the waste, you save up the carbon and maybe once a month dump it. But now you have a toilet without a sewer. And then if you do multi-stage systems for purifying the water, your water can just go around. So we hope within a few years to, to be able to offer the RV industry, and that's why we call it never fill and never dump. So you never have to dump your waste. That would be great. <laughs> you never have to fill your water. Right? That would be pretty awesome. That's what that industry needs. But frankly, so does the housing. Because a big part of housing is also all the utilities you have to jump into. What we believe is that you, all utilities need to move. Well, let me start with our first fundamental thing. Housing of the future is going to be apartment buildings. There will be no such thing as single family homes. We can't afford that. Never could. We only could because of cheap land, which we got from the natives. So now that the land is getting more and more expensive, we can't afford it. Well, we stole it, right? So we had that for a long time. Cheap land, right? Cheap raw materials because we won the wars or things like that. Well, those things are going to disappear. The single family home where each family has their own little kingdom is not sustainable for the whole world. It's just, you can't do it. So there's cultural changes that have to happen as well. Yeah. For instance, my wife is not ready at all. Go keep dreaming, but that is ridiculous. Ridiculous, right? <laughs> so we've got to move to apartment buildings where we each have maybe 200 square feet, which means it needs to adapt. It creates scenes because you need eight different scenes during your day, right? So it creates the scenes for you. So that's why we call it adaptive. It adapts and knows where you're going, adapts to your need, but it's smaller. It's not 800 square feet like we're currently doing. It's 200 square feet. That's scalable to the world. 800 is not. And 800 on a half an acre is not. Well, so we've got to move 
moved to apartment buildings, but those apartment buildings need to have their own utility system. So we have a company called utility.xyz, that's that company there, and what utility is working on is the future utility that does our water, our sewer, our power, everything for that 200 person apartment building. That would be awesome. You never connect to any public sewer, you never connect to any public road, everything's walkable, but you have it all there. How far do you think you guys are from building a prototype well, building? We're, that's a prototype building. A prototype apartment complex. Okay, we're probably five years away from that. Uh, that's closer than I would have expected. Yeah, and we're probably seven years away from having the full utility system going. So build the rent. So housing as a service is where we think the future is. The cleaning's done for you. Everything is done for you. Your meals are brought to you. We believe enough people are already willing to do housing as a service. We can start in a niche and then grow it to mainstream, you know, over generations. You should build that in an opportunity zone. Since we started 40 years ago on housing, you hear about it more and more, right? Yep. The time is coming. We will be ready, I'll bet, when the time hits. <laughs> so that project now has about 50 million in it. So over 40 years, we've put 50 million into a project. That project consumes right now about about five million a year. But we don't have any question that we're gonna keep going at it because the market's the market need is so huge. We've made so much progress and we have so many patents.